Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You gotta be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Whoa, what's going on, stinkies? Timmy, ouch, Timmy Joe. Uh, first video card review of 2020. Making video cards about computers on the video, making the internet. Whatever it is. Uh, how, how's it going today? So, I'm way late to the party on this, and uh, it's been a while since I did a graphics card review. So, we're going to get like sort of two of them done today, as we'll we probably saw from the thumbnail or something. But uh, this is the Gigabyte Gaming OC 6 Gigabyte 5600 XT. And it's a pretty damn good card. It's too bad they botched the launch on this a little bit because. They, don't they always do that? Because it's a very good card, it's competitive, and when they have that negative press of having to battle it out with you know, NVIDIA last minute, it's, a, it's bad. What would have made way more sense, I think, is if they had just left these cards at launch and then made a 5600 XTX that had the better clock on it and charged 10 or 20 more dollars for it and maybe reduced the launch cost of this just a little bit to make it seem extra awesome. And then, you know, people in the know would just know that you can overclock the crap out of these and get like 15% more performance out of the box and everyone else would have been just happy buying, you know, a little bit lower cost part and getting a little bit less performance as long as that other option was there. So I don't, you know, you could debate it all day long, but they certainly screwed this up. So much so that I got a unit from Gigabyte, thank you Gigabyte for sending this over. Uh, I emailed them way before launch and then on the launch day, at the end of the day after I'd already bought one from Newegg, which I had canceled because it was gonna get here in like two weeks anyways. Pfft, freaking Newegg. Anyways, uh, so I was happy to hear that I would get one from them, you know, as, as a review sample. They shipped it to me and it has the original BIOS on it. So, I asked them, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to treat this with my audience? And they just didn't respond. So why they had to screw this launch up so much so that they still aren't giving people the proper information to get the most performance out of the card. Uh, you know, just, just fix that. And next time, don't worry about what NVIDIA is doing so much. You know, battle them. Have your plan thought out well beforehand. You know, like you're doing with Ryzen versus Intel. That would be nice. So 5600 XT review here today, and we're going to throw a curveball, a curve wrench into it. After we talk a little bit about BIOS and performance on this, we're going to put it up against a card that maybe hasn't been, it hasn't really been compared to very much, but it's, it's a good one. And I've got it right here. MSI Twin Frozer Titanium 1070 Ti eight gigabyte model this has got six so it's got a vram advantage but this is a card you can find all over ebay there are tons of these out here and if you're a you know 1080p maybe you got a 1060 or an rx 588 gigabyte and you're thinking i want to really max out my 1080p maybe you have a 1080p monitor now uh you want a little bit of an upgrade these are going to be cards you're going to consider because they do offer a considerable upgrade over uh, you know, an RX 580 or a 1066 gigabyte. Um, but, you know, you go and look at the used prices on these and they're not that competitive. There's always this NVIDIA tax you gotta pay. And if you wanna talk about performance versus the 2060, 2060 Super, 1660 Ti, 1660 Super, I'm sure that's been covered, to, you know, to all end, but I didn't see anyone really comparing it versus a good quality used card from NVIDIA. So we're doing 5600 XT versus the 1070 Ti. Pretty similar performance as we'll see. And you might ask, why aren't you putting a Vega 56 up here? Well, because the Vega 56 would be twice as big. And these are not small cards. It would be twice as big or it would be the blower model. And there'd be all kinds of performance asterisks and stuff you gotta worry about, excessive heat, you know, uh, blower, excessive noise, or um, you know, you've got to have a really good power supply. Typically a 1070 Ti, although this one has two power connectors, only has an eight pin connector. And uh, most of these will only have an eight connector, uh, pin connector as well, which leaves them uh, pretty well uh, matched when it comes to heat output and uh, cooler requirements and stuff like that. And uh, power consumption, these should run pretty well on a 
sub 600 watt PSU where I wouldn't recommend using a Vega 56 and a good CPU with anything less than like a 650 watt. So I think this is going to be a good comparison. And I got this card uh, and it's one of my favorite looking cards. It's, it's amazing. They should have made all of the twin Frozer models from around this time, the silver and black versus the red and black, because I just think this is one of the best looking cards out there and it's got a pretty damn decent cooler on it and it should be fairly comparable with these. So we'll, we'll do some comparisons. So we'll get it out of the way real quick. Talk about the BIOS update on this. I got mine and it wasn't updated. So I asked my gigabyte rep, what do you want me to do to tell my audience how to upgrade the BIOS? Never got a response back from them. So I did it myself and I'll explain it real quick. When you buy a 5600, you're gonna wanna check and see what the stock boost clock is on it. Open up MSI Afterburner or open up uh, AMD software and uh, make sure that that slider is more than 1650 because if it's 1650 megahertz it's going to have a game clock at around 1580 megahertz and that is the old bios the old spec on this you want it to say 1750 100 megahertz boost which actually en ends up having quite a higher game clock and quite a lot more performance uh, but out of the box technically you can just go and max the sliders out on this thing, even with the crappy BIOS, and you're gonna see that maximum performance because AMD limits where you know the maximum amount you can overclock these cards and to not cannibalize, you know, you know how it works. There's the power play tables and all that stuff. I'm I'm thinking if they do do the power play tables mod, that more power mod that Igor's lab was doing, if they do that for the 5600, you're gonna see people overclocking these close to 5700 speeds for sure so real quick let's get this uh little bit of synthetics out of the way ran some time spy out of the box with the crappy bios this thing got 6892 if you were to overclock it to its max it'll get a 7829 so the graphic score goes up by a thousand points just by overclocking it and it goes up by about 800 points by putting the proper BIOS on here. So like I say, there's about 10 to 15% you know, uh, worth of overclocking headroom on this from the crappy BIOS all the way up to its max overclock. And for the most part today, we're gonna be talking about this thing just maxed out with all the sliders maxed out because I was able to do that and I think most of you will be able to do that. So uh, if you wanna talk in terms of comparisons on time spy between these, uh, the maximum this got was 7,363 and the max this one got was 7,829. So all in all, they're very similar in maxed out overclocking performance, and they're gonna put out similar heat and similar uh, acoustics and similar power draw on a power supply. So a very good comparison I think we've got going on here. If you wanna talk Fire Strike out of the box, the graphic score was 20,051 on this guy. And as soon as we applied the BIOS update, it went up to 22,906, so a 2,000 point upgrade. Uh, and then if uh, you know you see it on the screen here versus the 1070 Ti, they're very comparable at 22,906 on the gigabyte and 22,184 uh, on the MSI. So very similar uh, you know, numbers coming from these guys. All right, so, um, well, let's just talk about the prices. This guy here is $300 MSRP. There are a few on Newegg that are like 289. So you can save a little, little bit of money with a crappier cooler on a, you know, one of the two fan versions or something like that. And then they do go up to like $330. But you know, between 280 and 300 is not a bad price for this, considering the average price for this card, which on eBay, you know, it's a it's last generation card and it's you know, nearing its end of life and this and that, these still go for $250 and you don't even know, it could have been mined on, I'm pretty sure this one was. So, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, the, they're not that far off. $250 for a used card, probably plus some sort of shipping on eBay versus $280 plus tax and maybe some shipping on Newegg with a warranty, buying a brand new card that's, you know, a little bit better in newer games it, there's a compelling reason that, you know, th these are really good cards and they're going to be worth it. Where if you compare it versus the NVIDIA cards, 
you know, 1660 Ti, it's not as fast as that. 2060, it mad trades blows. 2060 Super might be a little bit more, but the 2060 and the 2060 Super are more expensive than this guy. And then, you know, you want to save a bit of money, you can go with one of these, but the performance is actually quite similar. So I think the case I'm going to make by the end is that it's probably worth it to buy the brand new card which is not usually my opinion on stuff. So let's get into some benchmarks. I ran a mix of some newer games and some older games just to get an idea of uh, you know, how they're performing and stuff like that. And uh, when we come back, I'll give you a little bit of uh, a final summation on what I think is the decision you should make on a ultimate 1080p, 1440p card here. Check them out. benchmarks are done and they were a little surprising to me honestly when I first thought up of a kind of angle for my 5600 XT coverage I was thinking that I was going to suggest getting the 1070 Ti because you can save a bit of money it's got two gigs more VRAM and I was assuming it would be a little bit more powerful than it is but here in 2020 I think the better buy is the brand new 5600 XT, which is awesome. If they hadn't done that whole screw up on the BIOS, it would be a very recommendable card, but that asterisk's on, but you gotta make sure you go update the BIOS and this and that, it, it kinda ruins it. But I ran all those tests at max overclocks on this, which over stock is like maybe 5% if that, you get an overclock over this. There is very little room. There's like 100 megahertz on the GPU and the, the memory clock that you can add extra over the stock values you end up getting from the BIOS on this. You can just max the sliders out though. So maybe try it if, if you want, uh, because I was quite literally able to just max all the sliders out in MSI Afterburner, hit go, and this thing was pretty damn stable. I'd maybe increase the fan curve a bit, because the stock fan curve, but it, this cooler did very, very well. It's like between 55 and 65 degrees maximum with this thing overclocked to its max. It really is a good cooler. It's a four heat pipe cooler. And uh, you know, they've been using this design for a while. They use this design on all the way up to like 2080s, pretty much the same cooler design. So it's it's able to you know support the power that this thing sucks pretty damn well. It's, it's, it's pretty good. But ultimately I was surprised that pretty much in every title that I tested, new and old, the 5600 came out on top, even though this was more of a high-end product, yes, from last generation, but it has eight gigs of VRAM. And even the 1070, you know, that it, you know, uh, bumped up in spec, um, it has 8 gigs of VRAM too. So I was thinking that this was going to be more like 1070 performance when it's like 1070 Ti, almost 1080 performance when you're talking, you know, versus the last generation of NVIDIA. That's, that's pretty damn cool. A anyways, definitely big thumbs up. Thanks to Gigabyte for sending this over. 
get your stuff in order and give customers a good explanation on how they can upgrade the biases on these is all I ask. But when it comes down to it, this is a very well cooled card. It's very quiet at you know the, the stock speed after the BIOS update. It's got big heat pipes in it. It's gonna be just fine. I'd recommend it. It's a little bit big for the type of power that it's got. The PCB actually ends right there. But um, it's a really good card and I recommend the 5600 XT wholeheartedly because it's a really good value. And it was something I was hoping to see from a mid-range card uh, from AMD, but they had to go and ruin it with the BIOS update, which really sucks with the... Anyways, we'll try and forget about that in a month or two. It won't even, it'll be a non-issue. It'll be a non-issue because they won't have any left on the shelves. I think they'll sell pretty good. So I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. I love this card though. That's all I'm going to say. It's so beautiful. But 1070 Ti versus the 5600 XT. I picked this guy. Just makes sense. Warranty, you know, newer architecture. Yeah, a little less VRAM, but I don't think that'll be a problem for the resolutions that these cards are going to run, at least not for a little while. But uh, yeah, really good. Pick one up. 50, uh, I'll put affiliate links below. But I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. I'd love if you could follow me on the social medias. I could use some more followers. I post on there all the time with different projects I'm doing and stuff like that. You want to see a project I've got coming up? Microsoft sent me a prototype for the new Xbox Series X. I don't know why it's jiggling like that. And lots of content coming up on the channel, so do all that YouTube crap, subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching this really all over the place video about video cards on the internet, on the internet. I'll see you guys later.